Well, it's Wednesday again, which means that it's time to keep myself informed about the recent changes in Black Desert, even though I currently don't play the game um, that actively. Anyway, let's work our way down through the patch notes as usual, starting off with the events. The first event for this week is called Take the Leap and Awaken LAN. For this week we finally got the LAN Awakening, so if you were playing the class before, now you finally have the full class released. And along with that we have this event which is going to last for 3 weeks, during which you have a chance to obtain LAN seals as drops. Looks like I'm here too early because the click here link doesn't work, but I'm going to assume that you get the land seals by grinding, gathering and fishing as usual and you exchange them for different types of rewards. The second event is called Fever Time and this one seems to be here to stay as a permanent change, just like the enhanced armor drops, because it doesn't have an expiration date other than saying that the event may end with a future notice. You can see here on the chart how it works with the NA and EU times, but pretty much during the weekdays you're going to have 7 hours per day when you have extra experience bonus and then during the weekend you're going to have um, probably the same experience bonuses as you had in the past, so the normal 100% combat experience. And on top of that you have extra drop rates for shards and hearts from gathering and uh, ancient rare crystal shards from fishing. So if this is here to stay as a permanent change then we might see people complaining less about the lack of shards and hearts on the marketplace and stuff like that. It's a very nice event to see and I'm happy to see that they finally are doing something about um, the hard and sharp issues as well as the memory fragment ones, because if we see more um, relic shards, it might fix that as well. After that, the third and last event for this week, we have the Patrigio's Discreet Discount event is back, which means that for the next two weeks, you only have to pay 25 energy instead of 50 when you roll on the night vendor. So half of the energy used, which means more profit if you actually use the night vendor. Of course, after that we have the ongoing events from the previous weeks and now let's move on into the content changes. First of all, LAN finally got its awakening, so now the class is finally complete and after that world boss spawn tables were updated. Um, I didn't check the previous ones, but I'm going to assume they just be changed the spawn times for the bosses. Please check the tables if you are interested in that. Um, from game world changes, nothing really interesting. From all class changes, actually we can talk about that. Actually from game world changes it might be relevant. They added a new route to go into the media castle without going through the inner gate, the second gate. So it might actually be relevant for uh, sieges because of the whole. Um, protecting the castle thing, so it might be relevant for those people, but for me, I initially I thought it was irrelevant. Um, anyway, class changes. Let's see, um, from here the AP of the following uh, skills regarding summons was improved. So for example, Hei Lang at max level is going to have 80 extra AP. Same for the Witch and Wizard pets, 80 extra AP. The Lava Field summoned by Wizards and the Witch counterpart will have 30 extra AP. And um, the other skills, I don't know what class they belong to and what they do. But yeah, they increased the AP for those and um, also on top of that there is this line which I'm not sure what it refers to. Summoned creatures, magical circles and formations spawned by a character will get stats that combine the AP of the, of the summoned object itself and the character. So does that mean that um, if I summon for example the lava pool it's going to combine the AP from my wizard and also the AP from the skill? making it overall a lot better, maybe. So there's that and they made some further adjustments to the CC system where now for example they changed how Wailing Wind works where the skill on Ranger it used to have a knockback effect, they changed it so that it, um, it doesn't apply the knockback only on the first hit but also on the latter hits as well. So pretty much every hit from Wailing Wind is going to keep on applying the knockback effect and probably this 
this is going to result in the target being knocked, knocked back further and for a longer duration. And the same for other skills as well. So just look on the class specific changes to see what was changed for your class. It's pretty much just changes to the CC mechanics for this week. So I can skip all of the individual class changes and get into item changes where um, the first relevant one, the Elion Steer is now going to recover 100% of the experience lost, even for adventurers who are on negative karma. So if you were on negative karma before, I remember that you would still lose part of your experience um, when you would resurrect with the Elion Steer. Now you don't lose any experience if you happen to die in some way. So that's nice if you were interested into going negative karma. I guess now is a good time to do so. After that they added some items, some missing items to the item drop information window. So pretty much the items that were missing, stuff that they recently added into the game. And the icons for the mysterious crop seeds, the Hifa or whatever it is named, was changed. Also it might be relevant to those very few people who still make uh, alchemy stones. The number of uh, palm wood and elder tree plywood was reduced uh, for the polishing alchemy stone of protection. So there's that. Moving on, let's see, most of changes, anything interesting. Rev revamped the item drops and drop rates in areas for training. What are areas for training? Okay, this one seems interesting. Um, accessories, black stones and scrolls written in ancient language, as well as materials for the Corsair training, um, I suppose awakenings for horses, um, will drop at varying proportions depending on the designated area. We hope adventurers can enjoy making their choice for which area to train in. So I assume this means that they changed, for example, how the, the scroll drop rates from Crescent Shrine versus something like Akman or Pilaku Jail, they now should have different uh, drop rates. And maybe this balances the spots and um, actually makes some of them better than others. Through the optimization process of item drop balance, certain changes were made where those items that are classified as main droppable items are increased, while the other items are decreased in drop rate. Other loot items um, acquirable from designated areas can be checked through the item table below. So for Valencia, for all areas, scrolls written in ancient language and uh, Iona fragments, for Bashim base, they have the Azula Weekend uh, Magic Ring, a useless item in my opinion. Desert Naga Temple, the main droppable item, is considered the Azula Weekend Accessory. So that's interesting, I thought the Serap Necklace was considered the main uh, drop material. And also Blackstones. You can check the uh, table here so I don't have to go through all of them myself. If you are interested in the changes, you should be if you grind a lot and um, may, might be considering switching spots because of this change. And now let's move on and see if there's anything else left to talk about this week. General sounds of the giant chief Gehatu and uh, Jayath have been reworked. Okay, not really super relevant, but if you do Jayath, you might hear him sound differently, so that's nice. Quest changes. The awakening quest for Lan was added, okay. The rest doesn't really matter. Interface changes. Fixes, fixes, nothing really relevant. I'm not going to go through fixes because I don't really care too much about them. Um, if you had any issues in the past with something, then check the fixes. If not, then um, it's nice to see them improving the game, but I don't really want to read all of those. So I would say for this week, probably the highlights, I mean besides the LAN Awakening, would be the revamped drops for all of these areas in Valencia. So um, if you were considering, I mean if you are a heavy grinder, you should look up this table and see what they changed, because I'm pretty sure it, some areas are going to become a lot better than they used to be. Um, besides that, some small, I mean minor changes to the CC mechanics, they keep on um, improving it, I hope someday it's going to become, uh, you know, perfect, we can all hope for, hope for that. 
Um, anything else? The change the spawn table for loot for uh, world bosses, I mean. And um, getting back to the, back to the top of the page, we have the events which I talked about: fever time, the LAN uh, seals, and the discount for the night vendor. So that's pretty much it for this week. Um, I would say it wasn't really um, a lot of changes, but those very few changes seem to be very relevant, especially the drop rates one. So yeah, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, at least I keep myself informed about the changes, now I know what changed in Black Desert. I might get into grinding a little bit to see how the Valencia changes, I mean what changes they made to Valencia, but um, yeah, let's not make this video longer than it has to be. So uh, again, thanks for watching. I hope uh, it was helpful. Probably it was. And I will see you guys next week with another patch notes video. If not, I will see you in the next video, which should be related to Bless Online. So yeah, bye bye.